Good morning, everyone. This is Tractor Man 44. What I've decided to do, because we have a little window of opportunity here where the weather's kind of uh, going to be a little bit nice. we got some sunshine today, no rain. And uh, I'm shooting me a little laser up and pinpoint me a spot in the roof. And I'm going to go ahead and cut me a hole and set my flue pipe in place, simply because we got a nice day. Now, we'll have a bit of discussion here uh, about what I've got underneath the floor. I uh, don't need to go into that uh, in particular right now. But when I say boiler, this way you'll, you'll understand a little better that this is going to be radiant, radiant floor heat in here. I've got 1,200 running feet of 5 8 OD half inch ID PEX tubing uh, poured into the concrete. I've got four individual circuits, four individual circuits, four supplies, four returns. Uh, we've got a uh, Belmont cap that goes up on the roof. The, this particular one does not have spark arresters. Spark arresters, sometimes if you have a little bit of an inc incomplete combustion situation, builds the creosote in there and then blocks your flue and then gets compounds and gets worse and worse and worse. But that's going to be on the very tip top. And of course, everybody knows about the flue pipe. Flue pipe is not necessarily flue pipe. You can buy cheap flue pipe. You can have no flue pipe at all. You can use just regular hot air piping. That is absolutely not recommended, but a lot of people do it. This particular stuff here is rated at 2,100 degree burn time for one solid hour before any deterioration happens to the, uh, to the pipe itself. It's fully insulated. These individual sections are fairly heavy. I don't know what the weight is. What I'm going to do for my corrugated roof up here, I've got a 26 gauge uh, metal roof. Once I get the hole cut, this will be able to be farmed right up and over the humps. You can use this on a 6 inch, 8 inch, 12 inch, whatever. This guy right here is going to set up on top of whatever, whatever box I decide to make. The flue pipe will slide right through here. And then off the very bottom of that, this here will be attached. This is actually a, a, a support ring, and then this will, per, this will protrude down underneath my finished ceiling area, and the pipe will actually rest right inside this. And then our flue pipe adapter will insert right here at twist lock right into the bottom of that pipe, and then here we go with our single wall metal pipe down to the boiler or the stove or whatever. So that's the whole thing in a nutshell. And then I'm going to lay out the center dimension of the, the, the actual flue opening. And you can see I've got the laser level setting on. There, now you can see that mark. There's the center right there. So we're going to go ahead and trace around this. Now that we're up on the roof, I'll just cut to the inside of that mark and then we'll trim as necessary. So now I'm going to go down and uh, get that boot and get some uh, sealant and then you're going to see how that, that leaded perimeter of that boot comes in so handy whenever you're installing uh, flashing on metal corrugated roofing versus the tall cone flashing. What we're going to do is just kind of farm this kind of to fit over those ribs. Make sure that's set in there really, really, really good. Then we're going to draw around the perimeter so we can tell exactly where to put our sealant inside there. So urethane based sealant is guaranteed to remain resilient for as long as the sunlight does not get to it. Yes, you're going to use a lot of screws. This is a self-tapping bit tip screw with a, uh, a urethane head. Whenever I push that up through there, it's going to um, just adhere to the physical size of that uh, outside diameter of that pipe. So what we've got is we've got this uh, fitting here. This will all be centered when we're done. Uh, and you can see we've got the 2 by 4s tying the rafters together. That's going to support the support box from that side. Now we've got to put cross pieces in and then put the, uh, the final trim piece on to hold everything in place. We've got to actually tie the support into our bracing. And so what I'm using, I'm using uh, strips of hanging strap. Uh, if you ain't got nothing else, plumbing strap will be okay. But I'm making four of them for the uh, four sides of the support. I'll try to show what I'm doing with that up there. But first I gotta trim them. Even though it's gonna be covered up, doggone it. I just hate to um, hate to not have trim corners on my metal. It's doggone. I just started doing that 40 some years ago or so and it just puts a just a degree, a, a degree of finish on the project. Hey, 
Okay, now bear in mind, um, what you're looking at here and where I'm at, this is the very top of a 12 foot step ladder. I think ceiling height is 13 foot 6 inches, so I'm actually stepping on top of an 8 foot step ladder, got my foot on a 12 foot step ladder, and then I've got a uh, extension ladder back behind me. So that's, that's where I'm working at right now, so that's why it's kind of awkward looking and, and I'm kind of fighting some of this stuff. Kind of got the idea of what I'm doing as far as securing this thing as tightly as possible here because this black ring right here actually supports the pipe from up on the roof. All the weight is actually supported right here on this lip and by this guy right here. That's why I'm being so careful to get this as securely mounted as possible. But everything is square and plumb and it's just as heavy as could be. I think I could do chin-ups on it and have absolutely no worry. But like I said, you can see the the way I strapped this here, I've got two screws on every one. I've got vertical screws here, and I've got a redundancy. I've got another screw in up there. So even in a volatile flu fire, there's absolutely no way this is going to go anywhere. I don't know if y'all have ever been uh, experienced a flu fire or anything like that. They, they can be very volatile. Not only do you have to be concerned about the, the extreme temperature in a flu fire if you have a creosote impacted flu, and I think I, I clarified this is rated for 2100 degree for one hour before there's any potential for, for, for breakdown you know, in the product. So it's, it's going to sustain one heck of a fire. But in addition to that intense heat that you have to be concerned about, uh, the volatility of what happens inside that flu, well, it's burning. It just, it just is really, really volatile. And you have to have very secure joints and you have to have it supported very, very adequately or you can actually knock your flu joints apart, especially for if you've got a single wall thickness material and you've got some joints that have a few years on them and they're somewhat deteriorated, you know, because of moisture content and things like that. And if you, uh, if you do set your flu on fire, uh, you can literally blow those uh, pieces of pipe apart. That's burned down many, many houses. You know, so you have to be careful about that. Now the final thing that we have to do, we have to install this adapter right here. Obviously this is the dual wall insulated metal vessels. So this here, that should go right up inside here and that'll twist and lock in to the piece of pipe that we've got ex extended out through the roof. Made a number of trips up and down the, uh, the step ladder, getting on the roof, but I never took you along with me. So uh, here I'm bringing it along this time. Hold on. And you know when you pop up over the roof, the sun's always in your face. So of course there it is. I gotta set the camera down, and I've got to uh, secure with a strap to my uh, to my trim piece. So hang on. Come on up a little bit higher. Here's my Belmont cap. Had that tied onto my belt. Here's the ring to attach the two pieces of uh, pipe together. Down here is my my flashing and the stub of uh, chimney sticking up through there. I really don't need a, another three foot section, but three foot and two foot were both the same price. So I just went and bought two three foot sections. But uh, yeah, there you can see the. Back of my hacienda over there with the uh, 24 gauge standing seam metal roofing on that, as well as my other old shed in front of this one. See, I stuck that on there and give her a rotate. That's locked in place. Time for this neat little fella here. It's a draw band to ensure that these joints don't come disconnect. Just have to make sure you catch the lip on both pieces of pipe. Tighten her down good and snug, and she'll be there. Okay, now this is a Belmont cap. It's actually a chimney cap. Does not have the spark arresters in it or anything like that. But let me tell you something. I have a um, an extreme dislike for these things because if you look at my finger here, my finger's got all the joints in it. All these fingers have all the joints in them. This finger here does not. In 1986, I was installing one of these Belmont caps. I stuck my hand up inside like this to rotate it and twist it on, put the twist locks on, and that extremely sharp stainless steel edge up there severed my tendon in that finger and I lost the use of that joint that was in the fall of 1986. That tendon drew all the way up and down into the palm of my hand. I had a knot in the palm of my hand for a long time but at least this joint still works. Uh, you can see the essentially the threads right here as well as the threads up here and that just like the sections went together it slides down and then you rotate it until you feel the twist lock lock into place. I gotta set the camera down in order to do that because I don't want to do it with one handed because I don't want to uh, lose a joint on another finger. These are the vary from uh, state to state, county to county, province to province if you're in Canada that, uh, that, that recommend different heights of chimneys. Uh, the rule of thumb in order to make it draw though in my experience 
has said if you're within 10 feet of the peak of the roof, you have to extend your flue pipe uh, above the height of that peak by minimum distance. And I don't recall exactly what that minimum distance is. That has to do with gusts and drafts of the wind as it's blowing over top of your roof, having, a, having a, an effect on the, uh, the down pressure, uh, the negative or the positive pressure possibly exerted on that flue pipe. And if you're in excess of 10 foot, then of course you don't have to extend it above the height of the peak, but there's a minimum height that it has to be. Now I'm about, I'm about, uh, if I remember right, about 14 feet from the peak. So all I've got to do is just have a certain amount of pipe here. But like I said, the taller the flue, the better it's going to draw. It was a little difficult, you know, it's hard to hold that stuff in one hand and, and everything stand on top of the ladders, get that in there. So everything's completely done. We're down off the roof. Uh, you can see Layla's feeling a little, uh, a little giddy right now. I, I haven't been playing with her a whole lot. So she's, uh, she's kind of missing me a little bit. You know what? We have beat this one to death. So uh, this is Tractor Man 44 and Layla, and we are out of here. <laughs>